And what are off-target mutations? Off-target mutations are caused by CRISPR and gene editing. It's when they go in and they just snip one part of a DNA and then put something back in to make it go. But, you know, it's kind of like they take out a Lego and they put in a Lego, um, but the, and they think it's just going to stay there, but it doesn't. It causes like a drop of oil in a pond. It, it was rippling effect. It affects everything around it. And so there are proven thousands of off-target mutations, changes that happen within the plant that were unintended, right? Other than that one target that they wanted to change. And so we don't know what those other, um, you know, changes are. And I don't want to have to worry about that in my food supply. So um, I, I, you know, I want not, I don't want just GMOs labeled. I don't want them in the food supply. I don't think they're safe. And there's no evidence to prove that they're safe. There's only evidence to prove that they wreak havoc on the food supply and the environment and our bodies. And uh, yeah, they may make some of the uh, producers more money. They charge 375% more for some of the seeds. They make them more money, but they haven't been proven safe. And, and I'm, I'm not interested in eating them. I see in the chat is that people are talking about appeal. This is a new coating that is being put um, on avocados and limes and lemons and oranges. And we have an article on it in Moms Across America com. Thank you, Ann, for putting that up there. So if you're if you're interested in knowing what you eat, you've got to you've you've got to watch things like this. You've got to share things like the real truth about health with your friends and family. If you you want to be healthy, we've got to educate ourselves because uh, in the most cases, the manufacturers don't even have to tell us what's going on. What is appeal, and how does that uh, how does that harm us, assuming that it does. So it's, it's a coating on avocados and fruits and lemons and things like that, that, um, is that it's dubious in nature. As far as the ingredients, they're, they're actually being very unclear about some of the ingredients. They're not being specific about it. And, um, there's a lot of people that are skeptical about how it could impact humans. And you'd have to go to the article and check out all the, the details on that. Yeah, it's just, it, it, and it should say A-P-E-E-L. It should, there should be a sticker on the product saying that it's, you know, coated and it's supposed to prevent it from rotting and it's supposed to preserve it, you know, uh, so that it doesn't rot. And that, again, that's a profit thing, right? That is that they want to be able to profit from the fruit that fruits and vegetables. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you, you mentioned a little bit in your presentation about some of the foods that are genetically modified. You mentioned corn. What, what are the other foods that that um, we should just assume that are genetically modified? And which ones um, does it look like are going to become genetically modified in the future? So the most common ones are corn, soy, canola, and sugar beets. And, um, and sugar, most people usually think is sugar cane. But in the United States, pretty much 100% of the sugar products um, that we are, the sugar that we use is from sugar beets, and they are genetically modified to withstand glyphosate. And so those canola crops, the corn and the soy, also cotton is very highly sprayed, um, but you, and you, there is cottonseed oil in, you know, in some uh, food products, processed food products. So those are the ones that are most concerning. But as I showed in the first slide there, there's, uh, you know, there's uh, crooked neck squash, there's papaya, per, per, the majority of the papaya in Hawaii is GMO and um, apples, potatoes, pineapples. Now there's some mushrooms, I believe crisper mushrooms, there's crisper soy. Um, and, and of course they, they won't be labeled whether or not they're GMO or not. It, it, unless you see a label that says organic organic means no GMOs are the GMOs are not allowed. And um, of course, non GMO means it's been tested. Organic hasn't been tested. They just don't allow GMOs. Non GMO means that they've actually tested and made sure that less than 0.9% of the ingredients of that product are GMO. So non GMO and organic is, is best together, right? Um, if you're, if you're going to be buying, especially processed foods, and so, yeah, you can look for cane sugar on the label, um, versus the sugar beets. But if you're going to use cane sugar, I would urge you to make sure that it's organic because cane sugar can be sprayed with glyphosate as a drying agent. And then you may have high levels of glyphosate on the cane sugar. So you want to make sure, I mean, pretty much everything is organic as much as possible. And are there other foods that they, that they finish off the, the crops with, uh, with glyphosate? I've heard chickpeas, for example. 
Yes. Chickpeas, beans, legumes, wheat, that list that I had of the 10 highest foods with glyphosate, all, all of those ones are the majority of them, except eggs was on there. And of course they don't spray it on eggs. It's, it's getting on a, getting into eggs at high, higher levels than what the FDA allows, which are very high levels. Um, and it's getting into the eggs because the chickens eat grain sprayed with glyphosate. And I know a mom's across America supporter whose husband is a truck driver and he had to get a hazmat license because he was transporting chicken feed and chicken feed is considered a hazardous substance because of the high, the high levels of, of chemicals. So I never eat chicken out, you know, unless I know it's from an organic pasture raised uh, farm. And uh, because what happens is when those chickens are eating those high levels of glyphosate, remember we talked about destroying the, the beneficial gut bacteria and all of that, well, they develop a resistance, an antibiotic resistance and so when they're given antibiotics because they're sick, because they're in these factory farm conditions and they're squashed together and they're all getting sick, they're given antibiotics. Well, these, these MRSA, you know, um, bacteria that they grow are resistant to the antibiotics. And so then Mercola published an article showing that um, I think it's 80 or 90% of the bacteria that contributes to UTIs uh, comes from chicken. And that's exactly what happened to me one time. I thought I was being healthy. I was in a airport. I was traveling and I was like, okay, once in a while, I'm just going to not eat organic and I ate a chicken Caesar salad. And within a couple of weeks, I had the worst UTI of my entire life. It lasted probably for close to three months because I refused to take antibiotics until my husband like begged me to do that because I was crying at two o'clock in the morning. And um, I did, and I took a fluoroquinine antibiotic because at the time I didn't realize that that was a major problem. And six months later, I had a torn tendon in my shoulder. That's what it causes. And then uh, six months after that, the other tendon in my other shoulder tore. I was in chronic pain for a year and a half because fluoroquinine antibiotics can cause torn tendons in the shoulder and or the Achilles heel. And I believe it all goes back to that GMO chicken salad that I ate. And because uh, there was no reason for me to have any torn tendon issues at all. I was fit, healthy. I wasn't playing badminton when it happened. Um, it was just, you know, some random thing. And so, and, and it ha that, that happens to thousands and thousands of people every year. It's called being floxed, F-L-O-U-X-X-E-D. The fluoroquinines are, are a major problem. And thank you for that. I'm sorry mm -hmm. to hear. So the, uh, Okay, you mentioned glyphosate as kind of the, the that was kind of the main part of your presentation. What other pesticides, pharmaceutical drugs, heavy metals, veterinary drugs are in our food supply? And then because it's going into the animals and it's getting into our environment, and has the FDA and the USA um, tested that kind of stuff and taken any of it off the market? Yeah. So. Thank you for mentioning veterinary drugs again. I want to um, touch on that and then I'll talk more about pesticides. So um, the veterinary drugs that are going into these animals are, are causing them to, some of them are causing them to lactate more, right? They want the cows to make more milk, which is ridiculous because they're dumping milk across the country. I know farmers that say that when the, when the, they come to collect the milk, there's two trucks that come a week and they fill up these giant trucks, you know, of milk and they dump one of them every week. They just dump the milk out because there's too much milk in America and they're overproducing. But anyway, some of these farmers, they just wanna make more money. So they inject their cows with veterinary drugs that cause the, the cows to lactate and produce more milk and they get paid more, right? They don't care whether they get that it's used or not, they just get paid more. And um, and the there was a uh, nursery school friend of mine, I've known her my entire life. She is a school counselor in a high school. And she told me, Zen, these kids are SOL, like they're in so much trouble. Uh, they have so many mental health issues. She's in, you know, in high school, they come in to talk to her as a school counselor. She said one girl came in who uh, was crying because she lactated in the shower that morning, a 15 year old girl started producing milk. She's like, what is wrong with me? Why is this happening? I'm not pregnant. I'm not on birth control. Like what is happening? And she did not know. She's like, her, just your hormones are just messed up. Well, why do we think her hormones are messed up? Probably because she's eating school lunch food that's pumped full of veterinary drugs at really high levels that cause lactation. That's my assertion. We are, we are inundating our kids with endocrine disrupting chemicals that's causing their bodies to react in ways that we have never seen before. That, that is not normal. Imagine now, imagine how is she thinking? How is she able to cope in school? How are her relationships with people? If her hormones are going crazy like that, 
right? How is she thinking about herself? How, what, how are we impacting the future of America when we're inundating our kids with chemicals like this? They're not able to think properly and focus on school and learn and, and create like some, you know, amazing new invention or something like that. If they're crying because their hormones are going crazy, right? It's really a major impact on America and it's, it's got to be stopped. We have got to have healthier school lunches. We've got to have a healthier food supply. This is, this is a, this is a major epidemic in America. Not, and I'm not even talking about the autism ep- ep- epidemic and all of that, which is, you know, directly linked to glyphosate and all the problems, but it's all comes back to, yes, a whole myriad of pesticides. And one thing I want people to know about regarding pesticides, I can't even name them all, right? There's, there's thousands of of different kinds of pesticides in hundreds of formulations. And um, the one thing you have to know is they don't test the final formulation for safety. They, the EPA only requires that the, the pesticide companies submit testing, short-term testing on one ingredient in that formulation. And that's what they did with, with Roundup. They, they chose glyphosate because it's not acutely toxic. It is long-term harmful, right? It's not acutely tied. The more, the other ingredients in Roundup are a thousand times more toxic. So, uh, they, they have, and I've gone to the EPA four times. I've met with them because we had 10,000 of our moms called the EPA after we found glyphosate and breast milk, they were pissed off. And so they invited me to go to the EPA. It happened to be on Rachel Carson's birthday, May 27th. And that was amazing. It was like, you know, serendipitous. And we brought 11 people. There were nine of them. We sat down instead of one hour, we talked for two hours and, um, and I said to them, you know, you don't have any studies proving that glyphosate is safe for, you know, for use with humans. And they said, well, you know, I said, you know, and they said, well, we have plenty of studies. And I said, but not on humans. You don't. And they said, well, of course not. It's not ethical to test pesticides on humans. I said, well, if it's not ethical to test pesticides on humans, how is it ethical to allow pesticides in humans through our food and in our breast milk? You need to stop it. And you need to stop it. Now you're poisoning our children and our babies and it's criminal what you're doing. And, uh, they were a little shooken up. Uh, they did eventually do their own testing, but they claim that they didn't find glyphosate in breast milk. I wonder where they got those breast milk samples from. Maybe it was from the 1930s. I don't know, but you know, um, they, they know what they're doing and they all, what they also, what I also know from my experience being a consumer representative on the, uh, California organic advisory committee, I was, a I was a, a, a consumer representative on that committee. There were farmers and doctors and I'm sorry, farmers and retailers and growers and certifiers. And I was the consumer representative. 